Good morning, Geshela. Can you hear us? Good morning and welcome very much for um, Geshe Yeshe Tapke for joining us today, for um, giving us these profound teachings. We are so fortunate. And also uh, to Christina, uh, sorry, Katrina, for <laughs> Katrina Brooks for um, being able to bring them into the language that most of us here can understand. I think Minable Children would like to be the welcomer for our. Okay. Katrina, will you translate what I say? Uh, yes, I'll do my best. Okay. Uh, so, Geshela, we're very delighted that uh, you accepted our invitation to teach. Uh, uh, Pramanavartika, and we've been studying that now with you for several years. Ani kirangi unganzo la sungje di naya la tukje nang sergio re unganzo gawo shetra chung song ani lo shigi ring la sungje di naya la pe gawo chung song unganzo lo chong chegin chegin. So it was Kabche Ling. It was Kabche Ling Rinpoche that suggested that we invite you to teach this text, and I had to request many times. And so uh, it's um, really something quite special to hear from Navartika teaching from Geshe-la. Ani naranzo yen ling rimboche ki nanzo sungju di sugores sung song ani ting mangbo sugo chung yene kerang namjel di ki sungju naya pe misibe yapores ani tuje na. And we're also very happy that you uh, want to extend the teachings so that we can. Hopefully, complete the text this time. Ani kerang sungju di yeru tanya nanso gabo chung song chichena lodi peja di sargires. Okay. Oh yeah. So we can begin now. Oh, tanya tanya kundi she so mendo. Oh yeah, tanya she she chua. Oh, tanya re. The shadow was the appear to make company can more than much and that. And they can all my can drink it all. And they can get you down. Oh, can drink it some more. Yeah, tell you, I tell you, John, I had a Kim Song yet a Kanga Nami money. Jerry, this one's a pay away. Yes, we are here. Oh, Lombard in the area, combat in the char. And it ever some of combustion, sweet to the pair cover you, and do chasing a pair cover you, give us a win some beer. Oh, it is all the chase we run down a chair, and it's some money hung out to the lace or not. So, um, first, I would just like to um, say hello and welcome, um, especially to everyone um, there at uh, the Abbey. I really, truly uh, rejoice in the activities of your uh, nunnery um, in all of the, the kind of work that you do, holding ethics and so forth and offering teachings to others. So, uh, first, I would just like to uh, rejoice in the kind of um, study and work that you do and say uh, hello and good morning to everyone. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tinny, I didn't know she sent us again. You are the mambo you did. Oh, Chita, Zambuli could not tell us how. Oh, Tinjilia, did you turn she? Oh, to my singer pay, didn't I run to ya? Pachi share. We make you tambatsungi. You would tambat numji. Yamlin, I get changed in the dinners while she could get chone. Oh, Cabo Sambuda, turn to some at the summer to the chess we are here. So, um, and for um, those others, um, I know that there are others listening um, and we have very uh, busy lives. There are other sort of distractions um, and things uh, that are going on. Um, so just having this opportunity to listen to the Dharma um, of these holy beings, uh, we should rejoice uh, in this opportunity. Um, and I rejoice in your being here to listen to these teachings. Oh, yeah, Tanga got to win that. Oh, they are dollar. She soon made that to get in and dress. She soon made that to get in and dress. Drake, she 
Kala Tata Chu Joe Chendro Namgelo Dati Reserve Baptism to New York Draw Sora Oh, this is what I say. Siba comes from Se Siba comes from Sedunga Razo Kuaba to the Neda and then read a long jitter or some other. Don't come soon, come soon, me comes soon, Chenna Juara. Nea, Yana. Yawa eta, tendro me sa, summa is a dry rig truce. Oh, coe, seems a rig medra medra cajun at the summa sumbura. She soon met us to be a tender us. Oh, tis a dry rig medra medra to you at the kanga. Meda barre. Jurve chuse. She soon met us, ten get tender us. Lubur to caneo, ten get to betty, lubur to caneo, hama gracefully younger. Cavandra Hamma was a little bit to the end of your day. Oh, Tina Singarazua, do I read to be some jetta? Yam Mileke, Yam Lubur to Mileke, Yam Mine, Joe Sandatilici, Yam Sandatini, Aunt and Julice, Yam Halice, Tendisha, do they you are no? Said a Susan Meta, Tengate, Tinda, and Rasa, Songua, or teach you Lamna, yeah. So uh, then we will uh, begin uh, with the teachings. Um, so here, uh, to quote from um, the sutras, um, it says here that the three realms of samsara are impermanent. Um, they are like um, an autumn cloud. Uh, so we'll begin with that uh, part of this. This is, um, and it continues saying our, that our life uh, it dissipates quickly. It's like a fa flash of lightning gone in a moment. So here, uh, the three realms of samsara, so we can talk about the, the realms of samsara as being this sort of environment, our bodies, our enjoyments, and all of that. We can divide samsara into the three realms of the desire, the form, and the formless realms, or talk about the six types of beings, um, hell beings, hungry ghosts, animals, humans, demigods, and gods, and so forth. Uh, but this, uh, uh, these realms of samsara, it's something that like an autumn cloud, comes about sort of suddenly, quickly, and dissipates just as quickly. So we take rebirth, say, as a human, and then we go on and take rebirth as an animal, and we're born again and again in different realms, always subject to this constant change. Oh, yeah. Tendro Dreaky, Yane and the Korak and the Dram and the Chaga do also go out, Drake is a color that I'm so saying. Oh, teach it too. So um, here uh, it continues by uh, describing our existence in um, samsara as like uh, being like a, an actor taking on uh, different roles. It's not as though uh, when we take rebirth within these six realms, we are say always born as a human, but rather it's um, we are subject to death and rebirth. And each birth that we take, we sort of take on a different role. We go from being a human to being an animal to being a god and so forth. So um, in this way, it's like we're, we're moving through Taking on different guises as we go through births. Oh, yeah. Draw a center, Namgelo, that is. Tezi Omarwa. Tez and Dre Chedros and Dwari Dru Kavake in Aya. So said the Neate, Nerisa Babjunashi, 
So um, the life uh, that we have is like a, a flash of lightning. It's, it's constantly going like um, a waterfall uh, cascading down a steep mountain. So uh, when a being, a person takes a rebirth, like say we are born as a human from, uh, we may remain as a human for say 50, 60, 70 years. But from the moment of birth, we are constantly going toward the end of our life. It's like um, a water cascading down a waterfall. There's not a single moment where we're not getting closer and closer to our death. So even if we are born in a good state, um, wherever we are born, we are constantly um, moving toward that point of the extinction of that birth. Oh, sure. So um, there's uh, the third line that I uh, sort of left out that was saying um, that uh, beings, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're like a flash of lightning. So uh, the sort of um, situation that we have is such that it's in our very nature to kind of destruct immediately. So a flash of lightning comes about and then is immediately gone. And so too, uh, like the example of a waterfall, we are quickly going toward our end. Oh yeah, Simjeti <laughs> So uh, what this is saying here then, uh, in terms of beings, those uh, that experience happiness and suffering, um, there are many different sort of levels of this. We could take a bad rebirth where we are subject to the sufferings of hot and cold, the sufferings of hunger and thirst and so forth. And we could sort of take better rebirths than that. Um, there are many different kind of levels of good and bad in terms of our rebirth. Um, sometimes we take birth um, as a human and we have a good kind of situation. Um, but it's not as though we are able to continuously take rebirth in that situation. So in terms of all sorts of different things like wealth and so forth, the experiences that we can have are of varying different levels of good and bad. Um, and so what uh, a sort of situation we are in is one in which we cycle. We're not always born as a human or always born as an animal, but rather we continue to kind of wander through these various stages. And this then is due to the force of our previous karma, the karma that we have accumulated, leads to the different various experiences of happiness and suffering. Oh, 
So all of the different uh, types of beings, these six uh, different types of beings, it's not as though there's some like person uh, leading you into these various uh, situations, as though we don't have um, any kind of autonomy, but rather are being forced there by someone else. It's not that way, but rather it is due to the karma that we have accumulated. If we have accumulated um, good actions, we are going to experience the good results of those. Whereas if we have accumulated many bad actions, we've done harmful things, killing and being jealous and so forth, we are going to reap the negative um, results of those. It's not as though someone else is leading us, making us do this, but rather what we experience is based upon the actions that we have committed in the past. Oh yeah. So um, here, uh, since um, our uh, good and bad uh, rebirths are uh, dependent upon um, our actions, then uh, where we are going to take uh, birth and the kinds of things um, that we are going to suffer are dependent upon those previous actions. So we see all kinds of different situations uh, within samsara. We see those who uh, suffer due to um, uh, they die from heat or die from cold, um, hunger and thirst. They uh, die due to violence and other kinds of things. We see all of these different sorts of situations within samsara, and we should recognize that it is in our hands. We actually, we take rebirth due to the causes that we have created. So we have the autonomy. We have the ability to uh, be able to choose our future based upon the kinds of causes that we are creating now. So talking about the kinds of sufferings of the lower realms is not really to scare you. If you have accumulated those those causes, you will have to experience the results. Um, but rather, as this uh, verse from um, the entry to the middle way by Chandra Kirti states, that you go based upon the causes that you have created. It's not as though you are led or uh, forced by somebody else. So recognizing that, understanding what it is that we should adopt and what it is that we should abandon, we should be careful with regard to the kinds of causes that we are creating now, recognizing that uh, our karma is going to determine our future experience. Oh, yeah, then you tongue at a door. Do I read to the water, Madame Madame? Oh, tis you, Tenant, do I read to the Madame Madame again? 
Any consulted to La Coabas, you are a Corabas, Corgan consulted. Cosa de Caress de Dari to the Giordera, Coras, Corabas, the Marazo, the Mill and Nene, and it did do no gain. So I did do no gain to a Coabas, you are a Tesagonet, the Lia, Corene, Sigora, Corelu, Corene, Corelu, Paul, a long table, Casa. Long chairs so that to do the shell as over. Oh, this come to be the quad. Tell the corgas and get to the corapa. This also so get to do new aggie. Lue you and a lute and lume and a sem that you madame madarich. Get a or tell a coras or a rang telling nan and it to do new gears and corapa as you are. Tell it to me them bars, coras to me them bars if you are. Yeah, this one. So uh, when we talk about um, uh, the six uh, different types of beings, um, we have all these um, different uh, types of uh, beings that take rebirth within uh, samsara. So uh, what we uh, are referring to here when we talk about um, samsara and uh, samsaric beings, so say we are born um, as a human, um, the kind of uh, body and mind um, complex that we have taken up, that is uh, samsara. This is uh, the, the kind of um, uh, body Body that we have, um, that sort of existence, is what we refer to as samsara. So the one who experiences then um, suffering and happiness um, independent upon having that particular uh, body and those sets of feelings and thinking and so forth, um, that is the samsaric being. And so uh, the abode then refers to um, the place uh, that we are uh, residing within and the kinds of um, external objects that we experience, uh, tastes, uh, sight, sound, touch, and so forth. So um, those uh, who are uh, cycling within samsara, what samsara is referring to is really that um, aggregation um, of uh, our body and mind um, complex. So uh, this this um, samsaric being, the one who experiences happiness and suffering on the base of having um, those aggregates, uh, this is uh, what we are referring to as the samsaric being. So um, when uh, one is in that state, this this uh, these aggregates are what we refer to as samsara, as well as being the truth of suffering. Oh yeah, tell it Shall Oh, this is good to the Akunjun Tembasi or Leda, Yamogi, Nah, Samsa, Naya, which are good, Samsa, and it Chagangi Kunella, Nanzinda, Tanzinda, Chagangi Kunella, Lesanga Sabasunda, or Leda Yamabas, it was Tilia. Tell a Kunjun Tembas to make a Kunjun a judiciary, so um, then uh, if one does actions um, that are harmful to others, um, those are going to result in taking rebirth in the three ro lower realms as a hell being a hungry ghost or an animal. Um, so if we do uh, those types of actions that are harmful, they're uh, non-virtuous, uh, we are going to create the causes for such rebirths in those three lower realms. Um, however, if we rely upon um, doing virtuous actions, abandoning, harming others, um, we create the causes to take a, a good rebirth. Um, so say taking rebirth as a human or in um, uh, the, uh, the form and formless realms. So uh, then by developing, say, um, uh, actual meditative concentration and developing meditative stabilization, one can be born um, in those uh, higher uh, states of existence. But all of those uh, 
uh, rebirths lower and higher um, are brought about by this fundamental thought of I, this um, grasping at a self or grasping at a really truly existent self, grasping at an I and the attachment and hatred that arise from that cause us to engage in various actions, karma, um, that lead us to take rebirth in those various realms. So um, this is the truth of the origination, the kind of causes, karma and the afflictions that lead us to take a samsaric rebirth. Oh yeah. No, they do that to me that to make you to some go yeah you are the take go get up your nation to make you to then go get up your days, make it you won't be children to the so so didn't say Cora come to well so so meba let a number be shawa to chin and pump with dog with a kitchen around meba pump line line at the torrel around meba and rock with a telea any car so the Cora Sigora Oh, Korea Dungele Tarbe Tabiores, Deca Resina, Damebada, Midabada, Damebada, Soba, Dona, and the Coral Tadu Res, Rala Ramameba, Pumbundolinche, Covatele, Tento Tadu Res, Roa. Oh, Tene, Ranchibo, Tele Taro Samaiba, Sosu Pada, Mada, Neda, Niduci, Vesimje Tedrea, Nene Tungeda, Nesongi Tungeda, Korea Dungele Tarbe. ทับเจตุมเกทับทัรตุกเวเชตุมเกโอ้ทินเดชเนคอลันเดนเนรวาตาซันเจยิโกวาตาชุมเชคอลันเดชเนตาชุมบาเซวาตาชุมบะเดด
Rangun dendi baş şadan sağa gitken kose günde günde gitti bu şey yola çalıyorsam. Değilse de ne çöğür. Jumba düzü kanka ne tam bu töne şey başa. E şeyine etini yamsula. A jumba etini çok iyiysem ki. O tünde kulun şey tam ne sen bir şuş. Da dindi bu şey ne? Oy. So um, here, uh, then, these uh, first um, truths uh, dealing with the truth of um, suffering. Um, we, we recognize that we are in this kind of suffering situation, and there are causes that lead to our experience of that suffering. And then we get to the point of recognizing that there is actually a method for eliminating um, the, those causes of suffering by developing um, uh, this uh, uh, wisdom realizing selflessness, the wisdom realizing um, impermanence and selflessness and so forth. We are able to put a definite stop to this cycle of casting off um, our aggregates and taking up rebirth due to the power of our karma. So there is um, a way to definitely um, be freed uh, from the kind of uh, sufferings that we incur when we are um, taking rebirth due to the force of our uh, karma without any sort of control. Um, and so this then, um, looking at the kind of lower realms, the sufferings of the lower realms and the sufferings of samsara in general, we begin to uh, wish to have liberation from that cycle of suffering. So there is first the kind of um, uh, wish to uh, attain a state of our own uh, freedom, but we don't want just our own kind of cessation of suffering, but rather recognizing um, that all other sentient beings are equally in this kind of suffering situation, there's a desire to attain that state of Buddhahood, a place where we are able to teach to others what it is that we should take up as part of the path and what we should abandon. And so reaching that kind of state of Buddhahood, where we are able to teach that path to others, based upon having eliminated all forms of delusion and developed um, all good qualities, um, that is the kind of motivation um, that we should seek to uh, develop. So, um, here, uh, it's not just thinking about uh, sort of ourselves, our own um, oh, liberation alone, or just uh, freeing those that are like our friends or our family of our lineage or um, somehow connected to us uh, that we want to have happiness, but rather recognizing whoever is a being, all of those other beings, um, we wish uh, for them uh, to have happiness. So um, recognizing that um, our, our own happiness is, uh, is dependent upon Upon self, uh, upon others, and recognizing that others are important, more important than ourselves. So, in this way, we can um, see how the kind of, uh, based upon this presentation of the Four Noble Truths, the three levels of motivation are developed. Of first, um, thinking about sort of only our own aims, wanting only our own um, extinction of suffering or elimination of suffering, and then we might get to the place where we see that, um, well, actually, all sentient beings are equal in um, wanting happiness and not wanting uh, to suffer. Um, and so we should uh, equally sort of respect and want uh, their benefit. Um, but then uh, there is coming to see that um, others uh, are, are, are more important. And so uh, here, this is something that we need to take on a kind of long-term thinking. Um, this isn't uh, going to uh, happen in, in, in a single lifetime, but rather thinking long-term about trying to develop that uh, state of perfect Buddhahood, wherein we've eliminated all faults developed all good qualities and are able to be uh, being beneficial uh, to others. And this is based upon first hearing the teachings, then taking them up into practice, um, and finally attaining those kinds of realizations for the benefit of others. Oh, yeah. ตุงเอเดมบังกันสุตาเลยเสียสารคุณจุเอเดมบังจุตุเสียสารตั้งกอกเบเดมบังเชียวตัวกอกเบเดมบังตุเลยอาเตเลยอากอกเตเสียเด
So um, here, uh, picking up then uh, from the text, and this may be a, uh, a little bit uh, prior to where we had actually left off, um, but so this is on page 389 um, in Roger Jackson's text in 500 on the, in the Tibetan. Um, so this is, uh, we have already gone through uh, the truth of uh, suffering and the truth of the origin of suffering, the causes that lead to that suffering state. And so here uh, we are now at the point of the truth of cessation. And so the truth of cessation is uh, divided into these four um, aspects. And first is um, in terms of the, of the aspect of cessation, here, there is an elimination um, of that grasping, this grasping at an eye and the grasping at mine that then leads us to give rise to attachment and um, aversion, uh, anger, hatred, all of these various kinds of afflictions um, come from our being deluded with respect to the self. So if we are able to eliminate that kind of grasping, um, grasping at an eye and grasping at mind, that then leads us to all of the 
the other afflictions, um, those afflictions that then cause us to create karma um, and lead to taking a rebirth. Uh, so there is an elimination of that fundamental cause. This is the aspect of sensation. So uh, cessation. So currently, um, this kind of grasping at a self is so strong that our minds are under the control of this. We uh, give rise to that sense of I and mine, and then in turn give rise to um, attachment and give rise to hatred and anger and so forth. But there is a point where if we are able to eliminate, to get rid of those afflictions, and in particular, this kind of delusion or ignorance with respect to the self, we can get to the point where it doesn't arise, where it has been eliminated or ceased. And that kind of cessation, that elimination of that grasping at a self, frees us from then taking rebirth in the three realms of samsara. So that is called cessation. That is called a liberation. Um, it no longer, we're no longer going to give rise to those kinds of rebirth um, because of having eliminated that cause. Um, and so the second is uh, the, the aspect of peace. So um, there is a kind of peace that arises uh, when we have eliminated uh, those various afflictions and faults. Um, so when we have we have been taking rebirth beginninglessly, and yet when we are able to remove that fundamental cause, then we can eliminate that kind of uh, process of rebirth. So we attain a kind of peace um, and a liberation. And finally, um, there is the aspect of uh, sublimity. So um, when, again, we attain this kind of state wherein we have ceased, we have eliminated the causes for taking rebirth in samsara, there's a kind of complete satisfaction that arises rises, a great kind of like relief or rest, um, that sort of liberation um, that comes from um, having uh, attained this cessation. So that's the aspect of sublimity. And then we have this aspect of definite emergence, such that when one has eliminated this grasping at an eye and grasping at mine, and there, thereby eliminating all of the afflictions that arise from those, one does so in a way that is changeless. You're not, uh, once you have eliminated, it's not going to arise again. Um, so those are the kind of uh, four basic aspects of the truth of cessation. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Tango Tara talks on the Ninjuns, a lot of Medoga children, never calling, never Jungs are at Telia, Ninjuns or a Lamdink in number shape of Cubso, Ninjuns in Yamdo Shavi, and so um, here, uh, then, uh, this final um, aspect of definite uh, emergence, um, this is going to be, uh, this is referring to the fact that once one has eliminated uh, that, uh, that cause, it's never going to arise again. Um, and so this is um, uh, discussed together in the uh, section on the truth of the path with the aspect of definite uh, removal. Uh, so here, uh, this is, uh, in, in the truth of cessation, it's referring to that kind of fact that it is not going to arise again. And that lack of future arising is what is uh, referred to in the truth of the path as definite uh, removal. And so this will this point will be discussed at that time. Oh yeah. To me, I said, I draw you to Rawame by Pumbu Langobade, Corradua, Lion Pumbu de Corradua. Oh, Diletini, Diletare, your ace, Diletarbe Tarba, your ace, Tingo, and Gogo, your ace, your other. Oh, Tita, go get to Beta de Cogudua. Dilea, Tower de la Tene Tendua, my individual case of Cicero, said Ra. Can it tend to our mind is? Mazuqua called and get Rana Rawame. Pumbu Dolin draws you to the Pumbu Dolin Chekovate, Ladan Yemobo and the Pumbu Dolin Chekovate, Tendre Pumbutle, 
tare yo re se te 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 do ne ko ba chi ma re se wa ra te ne te do a ma in de ko ro de se ya ko re pung bu te se wa ra tu he de ba de ya da nyo mu ba wa ge la be ra wa me ba la do ro ko be pung bu te se wa ra ngar ra ju mi ta bu li de se wa ra ko ya pung bu ta bu te se te do ne ko ba chi ke wa thong ma me wa ne ta do ba do ko ko de ro an ro de ju na ya ra ro wa me ba chi ko ro je cho ro ta de ตุเตนตุสเตอร์เวสนานิเชยอมารวาทําชิเมเรสโคราราชินจิโคเรจูเมเกเมลโคเกวาเดยานาเชนดาจุซงเกจิโคเกวาเดเซนเนโซโซเ
So um, then uh, we turn to this kind of detailed investigation that uh, lays out how one proves liberation and then how uh, the way one proves omniscience. So um, here um, we need to again establish um, that there is a, a kind of a powerful um, antidote. So when it comes to whatever type of object or thing we are talking about, if there is something that has the uh, power to act as um, a, a contradictory uh, to the cause of something, we see that it can eliminate uh, that result. So here uh, in the text, it says, there necessarily exists some type of elimination of one's own suffering continuum by the power of an antidote, since there is an antidote that is powerfully destructive of the type of cause that causes one's suffering. So uh, we see when it comes to any sort of object, like if there is a sickness, if there's something that is able to eliminate the cause of that sickness, then if we develop that, we can get rid of our sickness. And so too, if you can establish that there is something that is harmful to that cause. In this case, again, this is this, this kind of wisdom realizing selflessness. By developing that wisdom and increasing it more and more, ultimately, we can eliminate that cause of grasping at a self that leads us to take rebirth in samsara. So we can see, um, like the example it gives here of hot and cold. Uh, for example, when we see a cause having the power to counteract a cold touch, we see that there is an elimination of the continuum of horripilation. So if we um, uh, develop heat, if we have heat, that is going to um, get rid of that cold sensation such that one knows longer has goosebumps. And so in the same way, this grasping at a self of persons, this grasping at an eye that serves as a cause of our cycling within samsara, this cause of the sufferings of samsara, there is a powerful antidote that is able to destroy such a cause, meaning that we can eliminate the resultant suffering. Oh yeah, that and that Chicken, Oh, 
so um, here, uh, like in this case where we are establishing that there is some type of elimination of the suffering continuum based upon um, the cause of, uh, or based upon the power of an antidote. Um, so because there is um, a powerfully destructive type of cause um, that causes one suffering. So again, um, this is described as being an objectively impelled reason. Um, because we can see, like in the example of um, uh, if we say light a fire, that fi the heat from that fire is going to eliminate um, any kind of cold or cold touch. And so there is an elimination of um, that opposing kind of force by developing the opposite of it. This is something that we can um, establish uh, with our own sort of objective perceptual uh, authority. And therefore, it's called an objectively impelled reasoning. And so all of the, this is sort of based upon the nature of things. Um, things are such that they are momentary, changing moment to moment, disintegrating moment to moment, based upon causes and conditions. And so if there is a cause that acts as an antidote, we know that there can be an elimination of uh, whatever results from that cause. Oh, yeah. That didn't make a Oh, yeah, that did that. That may be a little bit of a suggestion, though. Come <laughs> Timmy Shares <laughs> Pardon,哦，这个那个，这个呢，没啥个，啥都是各个国家呢，看的呢，是吧？哦，但是没看过，就当然就没有，是不是？哦，这个没有，是不是？这个主要是个啥？这个没有的，主要主要是个啥？
So um, here, uh, this again, when it comes to um, establishing that there is, there exists some type of elimination of one's own suffering continuum by the power of the antidote. Um, we are uh, relying on um, uh, laying out a correct kind of sign or a correct reason. And there are three things um, that we need to have um, in order to establish that a syllogism or a reason is um, correct. So uh, for example, um, uh, it, we need to first prove the reason's relevance to the subject. So if we have, uh, for example, um, that pass over there, and I'm referring to like a pass in the mountains, um, and one says, well, uh, the, the, there's a fire on that pass, uh, that pass over there, um, there must be fire because there is smoke. So the first thing that we are going to establish is that there is smoke over on that path. We're going to establish the presence um, of uh, the, the reason, that, that uh, reason that one is laying out, as existing in the subject. Um, so uh, here, again, this is the first kind of um, uh, thing that needs to be established in order to have um, uh, a, a, a proper kind of um, uh, logical syllogism. So uh, we need uh, to then um, understand the kind of um, uh, mm -hmm. relationship between um, the, uh, uh, sorry, the, um, the uh, reason and the subject itself. Um, so um, here in this case, again, um, we need to establish uh, th this uh, sort of pervasion that needs uh, moving on to the rest of what is necessary to establish um, in order to uh, be able to have a correct syllogism. So again, first we need to establish the presence uh, or the relationship uh, between the reason and the subject. And then we need to have the forward and reverse uh, pervasion. So um, again, this is the relationship between the sign or the reason and the predicate. So um, if we say like uh, that pass over there, there is fire uh, because there is smoke. So again, we've established that there's smoke over there on that pass. That's something that we can see with our own perceptual authority. And then we establish that we have to understand the connection between fire and smoke, um, that wherever there is a fire, there is going to be smoke. So that those two um, are invariably connected in that way. And then we need to understand the kind of reverse of that, that wherever there's no fire, there's going to be no smoke. And so uh, establishing those two Two types of connections between the predicate um, and the, uh, or sort of the thesis, what is what one is trying to establish, and the reason um, is how one is able to then determine that it's a correct syllogism. So, uh, based upon understanding that um, uh, th that there being smoke establishes fire, we can say in a in a, a syllogism like, oh, um, that that pass over there, there is fire because there is smoke. And this is the same kind of um, uh, reasoning that we need to go through in relation to um, uh, these um, suffering, uh, this suffering uh, aggregates, and there being a kind of cause that is able to eliminate those. Oh yeah, that's how you be and 
So um, here, uh, then, uh, looking at the proof of the reason's uh, relevance to the subject, uh, it continues here saying, it is necessarily the case that there exists an antidote that is powerfully destructive of the type of attitude that is a distorted um, attitude toward the actuality of entities. So um, here, uh, if we grasp that there being a kind of self of persons, this is um, in uh, contradiction. It is a distorted attitude with respect to the actuality of entities. So. Um, in that, for example, um, there is a mistaken superimposition that apprehends that there is no fire at a smoky pass. So if one has that kind of wrong uh, view where one sees a smoky pass and thinks, oh, there's no fire, uh, because one has this kind of in correct or distorted understanding that can be removed through the proper understanding that where there is smoke, there is fire. And so too, uh, there is a, something that can act as an, uh, an antidote, is a powerfully destructive antidote toward our uh, wrong uh, superimposition that apprehends a self of persons. And so that um, the view that apprehends a self of persons is a distortion of the actuality of entities in the same way that like saying, oh, <laughs> There's no fire where there is smoke is a is a superimposition or a distortion of the actuality of entities. No, yeah. That can't say that Tanzila Nuchi, Tamito Bishir of the Kansai Tanzila Nugua. Kansai Tanzili Karin Gers and Nas Rangawachi, Rangetuich. Nas de Pungu da Sopoda Semda Tetu da Mandina Kurachi, Yves or his Tungu Doyara. Rangetube, Rangetuba. Nothing I call a pumbula, there's in Delco Mare. Pumbula lost, you wish some local era. So consider Tanzanian, Nati Rangetube, say it to Chuva Zigura. Tamito Bello de Nati Rangetube, says never to Gura. Nati Pumbula, there's in Delne to Gura. Pumbula ten pa. ตาชิลอยอยู่มาตรงลอกอยู่มาตรงโง่ทะเดอยู่มาตรงโง่ทะเดอยู่มาตรงโง่ทะเดอยู่มาตรงโง่ทะเดอยู่มาตรงโง่
So um, then uh, here, uh, uh, moving to the, the next part where it says, um, w when we see that there is an anti destructive of grasping at a self or person, um, how does it uh, uh, prove that those... Uh, uh, that the cause of suffering can be destroyed. And this comes from, again, recognizing those two to be cause um, and result. So um, here, uh, holding on uh, to some sort of an I uh, or a self um, that is somehow um, self-sufficient and substantially existent, not um, even dependent on the aggregate. Um, this kind of apprehension of a self is um, a mistaken kind of an apprehension. Now here, again, this is according to um, uh, the kind of uh, philosophical tenets presented here in the uh, Pramanavartaka, whereas uh, the Prasangikas would um, uh, identify the grasping at a self of persons as grasping at a self that was somehow um, existent from its own side without um, uh, uh, our uh, designating it on the aggregates and such. But here uh, we're talking about uh, uh, imagining or um, the kind of this wrong view of a self as though it had some sort of uh, self-sufficient substantial existence, not um, dependent upon our mentally labeling it, not even um, necessarily dependent upon our aggregates. So um, here, there is a kind of opposite of that. There is uh, a, 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 a sort of perception that accords uh, with reality, where we recognize that there is no such self-sufficient, substantially existent self. If it were the case that such a self existed, it would have to be either uh, within the aggregates or somehow apart or separate from the aggregates. Now, we can't have it be uh, something separate and apart from the aggregates, because when we talk um, about the person, we identify them as being being within the aggregates. So then such a self-sufficient, substantially existent self would have to um, exist as uh, either the same as or different from the aggregates. So here uh, we, um, uh, we kind of are, are identifying first um, the type of grasping that apprehends such a self that's somehow um, not uh, sort of dependent upon um, the aggregates. It's not um, actually it, it isn't any of the aggregates in particular. It's not our consciousness or our form or uh, feelings and so forth. Um, it, it's somehow separate or apart from our aggregates. Um, now that kind of a self uh, can't exist. Um, but if we are to then try to identify or uh, find such a self-sufficient, substantially existent uh, entity or self within the aggregates, then is it somehow like, a, is it one particular aggregate or would it become then that we have multiple selves because we we have these multiple aggregates and so forth. So I, I uh, investigating in this way, we see, well, does the self um, exist as something apart from the aggregates, like separate? Um, and if it were the case, then it would have to be totally different. Like we have yellow and blue. Um, but if the aggregates uh, were uh, the self, then we're, we would be left trying to figure out, well, are uh, the aggregates only one? Do they collapse into one thing? Or do we have then multiple cells? So um, in this way, uh, we uh, are, are establishing that there is a kind of grasping at a self-sufficient, substantially existent self uh, that, that, that has an antidote, um, which is the, the opposite kind of understanding from that. Oh, え、
So um, here, uh, when we are uh, looking at uh, such a self-sufficient, substantially existent self, um, if uh, we have sometimes this feeling that there's like a self that is um, somehow apart uh, from our aggregates, and if it were the case that we there was some sort of um, I or self that were separate, different from the aggregates, then if we say did something with our body, our self wouldn't do that because our self is separate from those aggregates. Um, or if we say um, we're experiencing some kind of suffering in our mental consciousness, our self wouldn't be experiencing that suffering because um, we are, the self is somehow separate, um, like different apart from those aggregates. So it would be like um, our right hand uh, doing something that has no connection with our left hand. So um, this kind of understanding of a self-sufficient, uh, substantially existent self that is somehow apart from the aggregates, um, that, uh, that, that's not a sort of tenable uh, position for them to be totally unconnected, like um, yellow and blue, or like a horse and a bull that are totally uh, sort of separate. Um, but in relation um, to our aggregates, we have the this, this sense that there is this I or this self that is somehow um, above them controlling them. Um, and if we were to assert that, well, is that self of the same nature as those aggregates? Um, those, there are problems that arise from trying to identify um, those two as the same. Would we then have multiple selves? Or if we have the sense that there is a self that is separate, somehow apart from those aggregates, somehow controlling them, we then run into the problem of there being no connection, of them being two distinct things, like a horse and a bull. Oh, yeah. Dangzinga <laughs> Come
So um, here uh, we need to then um, establish um, that uh, first there is um, a, a, an antidote uh, to this grasping at a self of uh, persons, um, but we also need to establish, um, well, first that establish that, the, that such a grasping at a self-sufficient, substantially existent person is the cause of um, uh, samsara. And we also need to establish that there is an understanding of a lack uh, that there, that such a self-sufficient, substantially existent self does not exist, that acts as an antidote, is powerfully destructive of that type of wrong view. So um, that um, uh, grasping at, uh, we can establish that this grasping at a self of persons, apprehending such a self-sufficient, substantially existent um, self, leads us to thinking I, and then we think mine. And then based upon that, we give rise to attachment toward those things that we identify as being sort of like on our side within our uh, uh, domain. And then we give rise to aversion, to hatred towards those that we uh, assume to be other. And based upon this kind of process of this grasping at an eye, then giving rise to all of the various afflictions, we then accumulate karma and we experience various types of suffering. And this is something that is asserted to be something we can establish through our own direct perception. Um, like, for example, if you are um, a thief and you uh, plot out and uh, say uh, manage to steal someone's goods, um, doing that kind of negative action, you're going to lead to suffering results. You might get in trouble with the law law and have to suffer in that way, but we can see that our we can establish for ourselves based upon our own direct perception that grasping at such a self and the kind of afflictions that arise from that are the cause of our suffering. And so too, we can recognize that the, the understanding of a lack of such a self is the opposite, is this powerfully destructive antidote that is able to eliminate such uh, the cause of our suffering. Oh, yeah, Tandy. Oh, Kashi Semba so um, here uh, we then, um, as a, this sort of question was raised, um, well, uh, I, I, when we see that there is an antidote destructive of grasping at a self of persons, how do we prove the, that the cause of suffering can be destroyed? And it said, well, from the authority that ascertains that those two are respectively cause and result, that we have this sort of wrong, distorted grasping at a self uh, that is a self-sufficient, substantially existent person, and um, the opposite of that. And so uh, here, um, then there's this passage that is quoted uh, beginning with, in someone ordinary, um, they see a self. There's a sense of I. And then based upon that I, there's an idea of mine. And we give rise from those to all of our uh, kind of uh, attachment um, to those that are uh, sort of on the side of I and aversion towards the other. And so this passage shows that um, it is proven by perception that craving for non-separation from self 
is drawn by its own power from grasping at a self of persons. So this kind of craving where we want good things for ourselves, or we won't, don't want to be separated from it um, has as its root uh, the grasping at such a self. And it is proven um, by perceptual authority that from that arises craving for the pleasures of the self. And from that arises uh, craving for the sense faculties and, and, and all of these various uh, pleasures of the self. And from that, in order to accomplish those pleasures of the self, there arise mental formations tending toward karma of the three doors. So we give rise to afflictions that then uh, cause us to engage in karma with body, speech, and mind. And from that arise the suffering sensations of not obtaining desired objects and obtaining undesired objects. And so this is how uh, we see that we are able to prove uh, through perceptual authority or proof through our own direct perception that uh, present suffering and self-grasping are cause and result. Oh, <laughs> Nikai Kiwa So um, uh, here, uh, then continuing, um, it says, if we wish to prove by objectively impelled inference that from death time grasping, there is connection to a subsequent homogene. Um, so here, th this is referring to where we can see that this um, kind of uh, within one lifetime, our uh, craving or our grasping at an eye um, then leads us into the kind of uh, attack. Oh, yeah. Okay. But this um, doesn't end just within one lifetime, but we also have, as we see within um, the uh, 12 uh, links of dependent origination, the eighth of those being gra uh, craving or grasping, they're sometimes variously translated, um, but we have craving and then an intensification of that in grasping, and that is what leads us to then take another rebirth within uh, samsara. So uh, here, we can not only sort of uh, prove that our um, uh, that this uh, grasping at an eye is the cause of suffering within a single lifetime, but based upon the way in which we cycle within samsara, this grasping um, at an eye, uh, this, this self-grasping, leads us to um, taking a further rebirth that is of a similar type of suffering. Um, so when we have the causes of karma and the afflictions, and we've determined that uh, suffering has uh, is the result of those particular causes, we can then um, determine that a future rebirth suffering will be uh, established by the causes created in this life. No, chica la molia. Seba, chiaba, seba, da cuba, lemba, ni vedi che non è che va a chiamare l'angolo, si guarda, che non si guarda, si guarda. O ti indio caso, ora. Mentre seba, due giorni, chica la molia, c'è ton, ma ton, ne c'è di tutti, ton, c'è di tutti, 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 c'è di Yangsi
So um, here uh, then, uh, based upon um, kind of understanding uh, this uh, that we have, um, again, in the uh, 12 links of dependent origination, we have this kind of uh, craving and grasping. There is the eighth uh, link of craving and then um, the more intense uh, ninth link of grasping. And so here, uh, if we, uh, at the time of our death, when we are thinking, oh, I'd like to be able to still sort of see and hear and experience um, those things of, of, of our past life. We have um, this kind of craving that occurs that acts as a condition for our taking rebirth. So um, although we need to have previously accumulated karma that acts as like the substantial cause for that future rebirth, it is based upon having this kind of um, the conditions of craving and grasping. At the time of death, we have this sense that we are going to be separated from um, all of those things that we have experienced, our friends and our family, and even our kind of um, uh, the tastes and sounds and uh, touch and so forth. And so we want, we have this desire to continue to have that, to continue to be able to say, see and hear and experience and that acts as then a condition for uh, the, the the future arising of such suffering aggregates and we can establish based upon this kind of causal process that the aggregates that we take in the future are in the nature of suffering as they came about um, due to uh, karma and the afflictions so this uh, this sort of future um, uh, rebirth that one will take is in the type of suffering we give it that name of suffering um, due to this relationship of cause and effect. Oh <laughs> Kevachimetumedi <laughs> ちまで止めるわ。止めじ so um, here uh, in this um, case, uh, we see that um, it is, uh, we're going to have um, this due to the present um, kind of uh, karma, karma and defilements. If we understand that those act as cause and result, um, we can ascertain then, um, again, this is the, under the opponent side on 392, 
um, uh, and then going into gelt of J, we can ascertain by objectively impelled inferential authority that the meaning of suffering is that which is produced by karma and defilement. So uh, we have established that there is this cause um, and, and result of relationship uh, between um, that which is driven by, particularly the grafting at itself, um, that then car are, uh, lead to our afflictions and karma, um, that what results from that is uh, suffering. And so when we get to the point of the of, of death time, um, since we have uh, this sort of uh, subsequent homogene that is established in that there's a connection um, between the kind of uh, being under the power of karma and defilements and the future suffering uh, that one experiences, we can establish this sort of cause um, and result um, a, a relationship between um, those two and, and that the, the sort of suffering aggregates that one will take on in the future um, are in the nature of suffering. Oh, yeah. Great data. Oh, yeah, that don't that dear Carsoda. She did it in a long motion to come to some good. I think I did not get all this passion. According to law, law, she and it's sick in the Hamma got in the target of the change to what she can listen to. No, this is not. So uh, I'm going to go through um, in a way where maybe we don't through, uh, go through, um, uh, uh, read through everything, um, but rather you can read through that if there are various uh, sort of questions or points that come up, we'll go through, um, uh, go through those. Oh, yeah. Tana kansa tanzi de ngobe nelu la chinji lo du shukwe sheba de ese. Te kansa tanzi tobe lo de chinji malo ba ngobe nelu la tumba shukwe sheba de ese. Tell <laughs> Kansa on a consacre tanzi, Mobinello, la chingilo de Subesheba in Bacangi troops in Asa. Then a consacre damn it, never chibble to Tammy to be reported to Grace Water. That Tammy troops at that time may say the Casa de Carre. Anything, Madame Melu Carre Tiha Gurwa, Casa Merson, I think of the requesting you, Gurwa, or did you do not? So um, here, then it turns to, uh, well, uh, how do you prove that the grafting at a self of persons is a distorted attitude toward the actuality of entities? And so how is it that we can um, establish that this uh, grafting at such a self-sufficient, substantially existent person is actually um, incorrect, is not in accordance um, with reality? And so we need to establish, um, uh, that, uh, establish this through establishing that there is no such a self of persons. So here, in terms of um, uh, the opponent asks, well, and how do you prove that grafting at a self of persons is a distorted attitude? Um, and it is proven through this ascertainment that there is no such um, self of persons. So uh, through logic and reasoning, we can establish, we can, like say, um, as uh, some non-Buddhist schools posit, there's some kind of uh, permanent um, uh, uh, sort of independent autonomous self. Uh, if we were to search for self, such a self, it's not something that can be uh, found. And so um, this is done by refuting that object of refutation, by showing through logic that um, such a self of persons could not exist, such a self uh, as a self-sufficient, substantially existent entity is um, not possible to exist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anything go 
So um, here, this begins um, then uh, uh, by looking at uh, the uh, ascertainment of this, this, the selflessness of persons or the no self of persons. And so this is divided into um, identifying the object of refutation um, and the reasoning that refutes that object of refutation. And finally, the way in which one meditates on no self. Um, so here, uh, this identifying the object of refutation, um, this has, it, it, it quotes a later verse from the text and in the Tibetan, there's only this one line of, because they will strive for others that are superior. So uh, here, this is proving that innate to one's mind, there is a desire for the ownership of an independent self of persons that is not the collection of the aggregates, a single aggregate or the continuum. So here, there is an innate mind. This isn't influenced by or having studied some sort of philosophy or engaged in that kind of um, logical analysis, but rather this is something um, that that is uh, innate. We don't um, uh, 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 sort of develop this based upon certain causes, but we all kind of have uh, this sort of feeling. And um, uh, this um, 
and desirous mind uh, does not impute only this collection of aggregates as the person. Um, so it's not as though it's the collection or the continuum of our aggregates that we identify as being um, this kind of person or have a sense of uh, existing as a self-sufficient, substantially existent entity, but rather we have this sense of there being something that is almost apart from, uh, separate from the aggregates that if possible, we would we would even like exchange our aggregates. So for example, um, if it were the case that we identified ourself with our form aggregate, then it wouldn't be possible for us to say when we are sick, think, oh, I'd really like to exchange this body for one that we're healthy or that we're good. So we can see in that way that we don't identify, say, just the uh, form aggregate as being the self. And neither do we do that with the mind. We don't, uh, the self is not the mind because we again have this idea of there being some kind of self that could exchange our current mind for one that is say really sharp um, and excellent and has the qualities of Buddhahood or something. So this kind of sense of there being a self that is somehow apart from the aggregates or sort of in control of the aggregates um, but not uh, any one of the aggregates. This is the innate mind grasping at a self of persons. Um, and this is, uh, uh, we can see how it is that we are uh, sort of willing to exchange one of our aggregates and in that way don't fully identify those as being the self. Oh, yeah. Chongbase, Chongsong Tom na, Tinyi se, Soso Kepsan re se, Soso de pa te, Pajo de ne, Dele la wai chou ra ye, Tep si chiu de, Chiu de ba se, Tinyi tindre me che ba ta gire se, Chongsong te liya, Chongba se, Tak ba zam sam lu ye na se gire la, O, Ding de ve se se, Ya, Te si chong na, Ding de gire. So um, it's it's also like um, as it as it says here in the commentary. So um, uh, not only is it um, not the case that just mental cognition is exhaustive of the person, uh, because if one could exchange one's present unclear mind for something like an omniscient mind, then like a merchant trading goods, one clearly would desire whatever exchange one could manage. So uh, when you have like a merchant or someone who's doing some kind of selling, um, like a merchant trading goods, um, they don't think of the meaning of merchant um, as merely uh, an imputation on his goods and holds that it is not otherwise. So here, um, the, a merchant uh, is one who is like in control of the goods and then he can make this sort of exchange. And this is the same way that we think about the self and um, the aggregates. So if a merchant thinks that the meaning of merchant is exhausted merely by an imputation on his goods and holds that it is not otherwise, then their results, um, the contradictions that they will be perplexed as to whether they can extract the goods of another. And if they should wish to obtain the goods of another, which are superior to their own goods, they would be perplexed as to whether they can substitute those or not. So unlike that we have this sense of um, like a merchant who sees themselves as sort of separate from their uh, merchandise that we um, are the self is in kind of in control of the aggregates and could exchange those like one would merchandise. Oh, that Rangatuba, 
Kuran Kuran Çotuba. Rangya Tübe Çayı Sıra Kansa Rangya Tübe Çayı. O Dünde Samlı Çoğu Rangya Tübe. Rangya Tübe. So 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 good day to work. So go pasha, sem pasha, so pasha, and so so you're not sure you are. Or ten days you have some little go. What do you consult us? You are this. That you may be too good. Consult damage with other two days. You are. Sabbath and maybe a consult round or a shame by your last and do some little or this. They shame by a consult round or thing you look consult a taj, a tanya to chebe, taji kaja also. Consult a tame to be a quaggy kaja de taji kaja de. Consult. Kumbi Chokbata Yagya Kanle Takwa Mimbe Ni Kansa Rangwa Tire Es, Kansa Rangwa Rangya Tuba. Kuran Kuran Ucha Tungge, Sokbuta Sim Dati Zula Nibadun Dilme Gungge. Kuran Kuran Uyo Tungge Re Chituwa. Ote, Kansa Dami Sibe Kaucha Tire Es, Ote Shluna. So, a continuing then onto 394, thus, there exists a desire for an independent person that is not exhausted merely by its imputation on either the collection of aggregates or some single aggregate. And that independent person for which there is desire designated as the self of persons is the object of reputation. So we can see um, that there is this sense of a self or like the existence of a desire for some kind of independent or self-sufficient uh, person that's not merely exhausted in the in this sort of designating as the various aggregates of the form aggregate and the, the, the uh, consciousness and uh, feeling and discrimination and so forth um, but rather we have the sense of there being um, something that is uh, independent that is um, uh, sort of set up from its own side without being exhausted merely in that designation or without um, even being dependent on that designation and such um, a self uh, existing as an independent or uh, self-sufficient entity Entity is the object of refutation Cheba zamji jang nebar tub la ase, kansa dami tub 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 res. Yana, pungbu sajja yinlenji pungbu chujin e chuele ya, kansa rangwa rangya tub e jindre si mede, pungbu dan chik dan tade kandu e mebe e chis ta kwe na tub re cha ra. Cheba zamji jang tub la, yana pungbu dan rangshin chik dan tade meba de, rangshin mebe e kyap de, pungbu dan rangshin chik dan tade kandu e me na, rangshin ji mebe e kyap se, rangya tub e mebe e kyap se. Pena rebon ke ra shiin se. Kansa rao wa te ya, pungbu dan ran shi chik dan ta de kandu ya, madru bu o se cha wa o se. O te ta te te re se ra. O te shlo na. So then the reasoning um, that uh, refutes that object of refutation comes in the next section where it says the person does not exist as an independent entity that is not merely an imputation on the aggregates. Because if it were, it would not be seen as other than suitable as the intentional object of an authority. Um, and so here it, it, it's saying it is definitely proven with just this statement. So to get to the actual kind of reasons that are laid out, um, uh, the, alternatively, the reason that which is neither naturally identical with nor different from the aggregates does not pervade the predicate, a naturally existing entity, as the hair, horns of a hair do not. So this is sort of like an impossible um, uh, type of object. So it should be known that there does not exist uh, anywhere an independent person that is naturally identical with or different from the aggregate. So we can obtain the pervasion there. Um, and I think Roger has this in the note, the, the other uh, full uh, kind of um, uh, syllogism. So as for the relevance of the region to the subject, there is no natural identity between an independent person, these aggregates, because the aggregates are under the power of um, a, a, a external causes. Sorry, I think I went too far. So just stop there. Tübdi çi ki ran şi du medes ta, kansa sakçen yelenci pungbu çözeyen, kansa ramamadan çi du medes ora, 
Tu duyu şema çayın bir eser. Sadece yelin yapın bu da duyu şema çayın. Rama vakit çayın çeviyonu ko takba yiyin kuru madde. Kansa takba çayın kuru da. Takzi rama çayın ki daha sonra. Tu duyu şema çayın bir eser. Tu dile ranşin sen de medese. Kansa de tümbule ranşin tadı bir çocuğun bir de rama vakit çayın. Onun bu sebebi neşin bir de. Tıda yöne mi sorun ala mami bir eser. O da tağın dinyeler tene. Tak dengi lagi ni, kunda je senyu, nombor cewa, tak tunggu dengan cecu suju betul dah menyucul lah. Cewa tak lagi ni, kalau ni kunda je senyu nombor cewa tak mimi. Kalau sekarang orang jatuh ber, tunggu dah orang sih cik tu mede esok tu, tunggu dah orang sih tadi tu mede esok tu, tunggu dah tak mimi tu tu gua le cera. Kita tunggu tunggu tak mimi sih lupa, cuci tu gua le esok, cik tu mimi tadi tu mimi le cera. Sabe tal tiene su cansa chiche rawa su de mete ese te da yo na mi su rola ma mi be se su ya pungu da ran shi chi na ta de kan de me be se su na o ti cansa ta mi chu bu de ese ton de ta de ton da ta mi ni de chu bu de sabe tal tiene cansa ta mi cha mi chu bu de ese do de so ya so um here uh then again uh, uh um it's easy to pervade uh, ascertain pervasion it says um in that there is um a, not such a self that is um natural such a self-sufficient substantially existent self um that is naturally identical with nor different uh, from the aggregate and so um as for here uh the relevance of um the uh, reason to the subject there is no natural identity between an independent person and the aggregate because the aggregates are under the power of external causes so um here uh, it can't be the case um that uh, there is like a self-sufficient kind of person that is um the same as the aggregates because we can see the aggregates are under the control of external causes and conditions and so the self um if it were somehow like permanent or self-sufficient uh, it couldn't have any kind of relationship with these aggregates that are under external the control of external causes and if it the this the person also does not exist as naturally different when we think of a person um we, we take the aggregates as the object and we can't really any other object um, in order to think of the person. So we can establish that there's not um, such a uh, self-sufficient, substantially existent person apart from the aggregates. So uh, based on those two reasons, we have proven the voidness and no self that are the special qualities of the truth of suffering, which cut off the um, attachment grasping at an imputed self. So, and based on the fundamental reason, we have proven the, the no self uh, that cuts off the innate attachment to grasping at a self. So here, uh, within the qualities or um, the various characteristics of the Four Noble Truths, um, and among those, the first, uh, the truth of suffering with the qualities of voidness and no self, um, these are proven through these um, uh, laying out of these particular signs. <laughs> That's our time for today. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you all.